have uh, signed on and are joining us for today's webinar. Again, my name is Patrick. I am with Brodart. I'm your local library services consultant for Illinois, although I do live in Northern Illinois, so I fall outside of the uh, boundaries defined by Heartland Library Association. But I know the area somewhat well, more from my childhood than anything else, but that's okay. I appreciate doing a little shout out to Cassandra from our Heartland for helping me arrange and set up this opportunity to work with this webinar style with just Heartland. Uh, so maybe you knew or didn't know when you were signing on for this, uh, that this is actually limited to the Heartland group. And one of the, one of the uh, things that we wanted to set up was a little panel discussion with libraries from Heartland that are actually using our services so that you maybe get a little bit more of a firsthand comparison that you're not thinking, uh, well, this, this may work for Chicago Public, but it's not gonna work for me. Uh, this is gonna be a discussion specifically with Cami Com. Uh, uh, or previously I had St. Uh, we did it one earlier this week and that was with St. Elmo Library, but today we've got Cami from Germantown Public Library. So all of you from Heartland probably know exactly where she's located uh, and maybe you know her personally. But uh, if not, this is going to be a chance to get to know her and we'll learn a little bit about her library. So we're going to try and keep the webinar a little bit short. Um, but again, for housekeeping, for those of you who signed in late, uh, at the bottom of the screen, you should see a section that's marked Q&A. Uh, that would be where you would mark it, uh, introduce any of your questions or ask for any clarification of anything we're talking about. I'll do my best to be able to uh, integrate those questions into the discussion with Cami as we go. If it ends up being something super specific or you have a specific request for your library, we may discuss that offline uh, just to make sure that the, the webinar can benefit as many people uh, as possible since we have a variety of people signed in, including uh, it looks like we have a college. So academic might be a little bit different. So we'll do the best we can to cover everything as we go through the presentation. Uh, before we get things kicked off with Cami talking about her experiences, just do a little bit of a primer on McNaughton. Obviously, you signed on to this webinar knowing that's what we're going to talk about, but I don't want to assume that you know what McNaughton is. So McNaughton has been, uh, we are the longest standing book subscription service in the industry. Uh, Brodart has been around for over 80 years. McNaughton was an individual company that Brodart purchased. Uh, it's been, I should know the date, but it's been over 50 years. Uh, we had St. Elmo on earlier in the week to do an earlier webinar, and they were one of my oldest customers having started their McNaughton plan back in the 70s. So we have many customers who've been on this for a very long time. Uh, the way the, pro the program works is an extremely customizable uh, uh, program for both its size and its value, where what you're going to be doing as your library is you have the opportunity to effectively rent or borrow uh, the books from us keeping them in your collection as long as you want. There's no time limit. There's no time constraints on how often you have them. But you bring them into your collection, whether it's bringing in 20 copies of a James Patterson to meet demand, or you have a bookmobile that you're trying to fill the entire collection. You get to pick your own books. You, uh, the books get shipped to you as part of the service. You use the books as long as you want. When you ship them back to us, that is also included in the cost of the service. Every library uses it slightly differently. Uh, and that's why I wanted to make sure we did this more of the panel discussion where we can bring in somebody like Cami and talk about the actual usage of McNaughton in her specific library, which is Germantown. So I've done a little bit of introduction for Cami, but I'm gonna pass it over to her, let her introduce herself a little bit, maybe talk a little bit about the library size of libraries, you know, community served. And then we can talk a little bit about, she can talk a little bit about how she uses McNaughton and why. So go take it away, Vic Cammy. All right. Um, I actually just started in Germantown in, back in July. So the um, librarian that had been there for 25 years retired, and I'm the new one. So our population's a little less than 2,000. We don't um, have a lot of traffic, uh, especially now with um, COVID. I, I was told that after school hours are usually really busy. We kind of turn into the um, after school program until kids go off to their sporting events or practices. Um, so our basic um, population are more uh, an elderly population or retirees and um, the school district. Um, the school does, they have a library, but not um, like official. So the classes actually come over to our library to check out books every week. So that's our main um, focus. Um, and with 
McNaughton. Um, it was in place when I got there. Um, I did know about it from a previous library I'd worked at about 20 years ago and thought, oh, that's a really cool idea because you get a book, say it's a bestseller, and maybe your population didn't really enjoy that one. So after you know a few months, it's not circulating anymore and you want to swap it out, you just send it back. You don't have to worry about trying to sell it in your book sale or give it to someone else, or you can just make it go away if you don't want it anymore. And then the ones that are really popular, um, like your James Patterson's, you can just fill up your whole collection and keep them until, you know, say in five years when they're not circulating anymore, if you want to send them back, you still can. So that's what I like about it. <laughs> Excellent. And how much of the, uh, when you're trying to build your collection, like you said, sometimes you keep them, sometimes you don't. As you're building the collection, how much of your uh, book budget is utilized from the thing not inside of the, of the collection versus the titles that you just out purchase outright? Uh, it's about half of our budget. Um, we pay for 400, it's about $400 a month. I think the exact number is 402.50 a month. Um, and our total budget's about 8,000. So it's uh, about, about half, but I, I think it's worth it because you get all your best sellers right away. You don't have to wait too long. Um, you get to order ahead, like three months ahead of time. So you're not um, waiting. You can see that it's being published or, um, or how many copies are going to be available, that kind of thing. So you know how popular something might be and you can plan ahead a little and get it. Now, one of the things, just to clarify, so you're saying your overall budget's about 8,000. Is that for your adult book budget or is that your entire collection budget? Entire collection. Okay, so at this point, you're using McNaughton only for your adult collection, correct? Um, there is a, I believe there's a juvenile option on there. You so have the option of getting YA, but we don't, yes. yeah, right now we don't offer anything for children's. Okay, so yes. So probably, YA... more, so probably more than half of your your primary budget is then going in. So when would you decide to purchase versus when would you decide something's coming in through McNaughton? Um, I look at McNaughton first and usually that's like all the best sellers and that kind of thing. So I rely on that for um, those types of books. Um, and then also depending on the cost of McNaughton, there's a cutoff price. Like our price is 26. I don't know if that's for everybody, but if the book is over $26, then it becomes two books on your list. So I try and balance that out. And sometimes I just have to, because someone wants the next James Patterson and it's $28 and I just have to get it. It's too bad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. And that is something I'll interrupt. That is something that I will go into as I walk through the actual uh, interface of how McNaughton works online. Uh, she refers to a couple couple concepts that are worth explore, explaining. So the, as I mentioned before, the plan uh, McNaughton plan sizes are completely customizable. Uh, we are as a, we can be as flexible as you need us to be, but they're always based on a couple specific uh, premises. And one of them is the number of allowances you receive. Now, allowances is different than the number of books, and I don't want to get too into the weeds on this, but it's definitely worthwhile mentioning because Cami, you know, it, since you broke that out, each allowance effectively, the, just look at it this way, you will pay a, a value of an allowance based on how much of a value of a book you can get. So Cami's correct. I looked at her account before we started. She currently has a cutoff of $26. The, so she's paying for that. Uh, she's not paying 26 bucks, but that's how the, the plan is calculated. If she picks a book that's more than $26, it will cost two allowances. And so then it does become a cost benefit analysis to say, okay, do I want to use two of these allowances or do I want to get another book that's cheaper? What is happening in Germantown is something that we're slowly in the process of changing across the country is those cutoffs are probably no longer particularly relevant. They were set up years ago uh, when, when books were less expensive. And so right. most of the books would be $26 or less. Now we're seeing people might set that up for 28, might set it up for 30. We've had people go even higher if you start bringing in a lot of large print because large print is even more expensive. You're never probably, you're never gonna get to a case where the number of allowances will equal the number of books. That you could, but the, what you'd be paying is that's not the way the, the that's not the best use of the plan. Uh, so again, we would customize that. We would look at the different options, and I'll show you that when we walk through a little bit of the uh, online portal, and I can explain how some of those differences kick in. But that makes a lot of sense than what Cami's doing. So in some cases, if the book is twenty six ninety nine, 
it might be worth purchasing it outright as opposed to using up two allowances because then that's one less book you would get later. Um, and since we're already using up half your budget, you know, you want to use that money as, as, as uh, smartly as possible. What Cammie and I may be talking about later is changing her cutoff, but that's a whole nother conversation and we won't talk about that here because that's not necessarily irrelevant, but that because it's totally relevant to this conversation, each library is going to have a slightly different sit, uh, uh, situation. If she changes to $28, it's going to cost her a little bit more for the plan. Shockingly, it doesn't cost as much more as you might think. Um, but that's where the math comes in. And so in general, we like to look at it. We want about 80% of your books are probably going to fall within one allowance and maybe only about 20% might, might cost you two for those rare ones that you just say, you know what, I just, I just need it. Or, you know, whatever the case, you're going to, you're going to pick that up. We monitor that and we don't want to see people spending two allowances for most of their books because then it's not cost effective. That's not the way, it's not the way it was designed and it's not the way we want it to be utilized because at some points people will just say, you know, it's not worth it anymore. And we want this to be a beneficial program. The fact that they have been, what did I just say, Germantown's been in, in place since 1994. Uh, St. Elmo had been since the 70s. We have many customers that have been around for a very, very long time. It, this does work. And so we will always make sure we try and make it continue to make it work so that it keeps up, basically keeps up with the times. What's happening now is, as it's no, not unique to McNaughton, books are changing publishing dates all the, over the place. And so it's very difficult to know when books are coming out. But that is also a feature that Cami mentioned is we will try and give you advanced notification typically three months in advance to let you know the, high, the the best books that are coming out so that you can put them into your uh, into your collection for McNaughton. Uh, so thank you for that, uh, that clarification. You mentioned, as you said, there is a way if you're in an adult McNaughton plan, we basically have two with an adult McNaughton plan and a young adult McNaughton plan. But if you're in the adult plan, you do have access to the YA titles. I'm just curious how often you dip into those YA lists, if that's a major component or is it just like a random here or there? Um, I usually go through my adult books first and um, fill my cart with about half of the allowances. And then I go and look at the YA things to see what might pop out. Because um, some kids, they know exactly what they want and I watch for it and you know get those um, subjects for them. Um, and then I just have to look at my list at the end and did I go over what, you know, what's really not important, that kind of thing. But um, I look at those YA lists every time. Okay. And then for the collection, particularly since you're now putting some of them in the YA area, do you have a space limitation of how, you know, how many books stay on your shelves? At what point do you choose to return the books? I just do it with my, um, when we do our weeding, like we have our our weeding criteria of every three years. So if it hasn't been checked out in three years, I go ahead and send it back. Also, um, there have been times when patrons will buy the new James Patterson and I've just gotten it McNaughton and they'll donate it to me. So then I send that one back right away. I just swap out. So that okay. kind of thing. If I get a donation that you know fits, I swap it out and send it back. Or if um, it just hasn't been checked out in the three years. And I want to highlight one of the comments that Cammie just said is that in some cases it's actually being returned through the weeding process of not checked out in three years. A lot of people do not believe us when we say we don't care when you send the books back. We don't. It's, yeah, it's, I called and asked and I was like, oh, yay. Yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had libraries get militant on me going, no, you need to tell me how many to return. I'm like, none. I don't care. You, <laughs> the only time returning becomes an issue is if, say, at some point something changes for uh, some reason, unfortunately, you have to cancel the plan. Well, then, okay, we're going to have to do some math because that means if you've never returned anything, you have a lot of our books and we're going to need it back. But in general, you get and I'll go through some of this as we look at the, the details of the, of the online portal, but you actually get to keep some of the collection anyway. Uh, you also get protected for any loss or damage. So, you know, that's kind of an honor system, but if somebody spills coffee on something, we don't want it back. You know, you can't use it and we don't want it back. So you get up to 10% of your collection. We'll just kind of give you pro bono, go to say, don't worry about it. Um, we are basically trying to make this as easy as possible uh, for libraries. Now, if somebody starts out, you're probably not going to use the three-year weeding rule that your collection is going to build. So I will say for some libraries, and particularly we have a lot of uh, maybe some larger libraries that have bookmobiles, 
they will use this to say, okay, well, this is the bookshelf I'm willing to, I'm going to fill, or this is the bookmobile I'm going to fill, whatever. So it basically becomes self-weeding because you say, okay, the titles that come in are fully processed. They do have a label on them showing that they are part of the McNaughton program. So they're very easily identifiable. That label is customizable. You can have the spine label on it. You can have the library's, you know, contact information on it. There's a couple of things you can do with it. A lot of libraries will just say, okay, well, I can hold a hundred books on this bookshelf. If at some point there are more coming back than there are checking out, well, time to weed. And you actually, you know, you fill that. So every library will do this slightly differently, uh, to kind of depending on how you're actually integrating. McNaughton has been super popular during, unfortunately, during COVID times. What it's turned into is very different. You, uh, Cami, you mentioned that you're doing appointments you know, at the library. Uh, a lot of libraries are restricting access to the only the lobby area or for you know 15 minute point you know for 15 minutes or half an hour in the building uh the mcnaughton program has turned into kind of uh, you know lucky day collection browsing collection whatever it might be that may not even be in the catalog uh to have holds put on it it's just literally there to say hey you're coming into the library here's all the best sellers just grab them and leave you know and they're, it's available they're not fully you know they're not in the stacks so it's like a new collection so again there's just a lot of different ways to use it um, and it's changing through COVID. Uh, we've had libraries that did the browsing collection always and then discovered that their holds were going through the roof because people were now doing online holds because they couldn't come into the building. And so they had to start using the McNaughton collection to fulfill holds. Well, you can use the McNaughton collections for interlibrary loan. Like I don't want to go down the path of the myths that sometimes surround why people don't like to do leasing programs or renting their books. Some people think, well, we can't then let loan them out for interlibrary loan. Sure you can. Someday you're gonna need it back. But you know, as long as your program works, we don't care. There's nothing restricting you for how you use these books. We try and make it as user-friendly as possible, as flexible as possible, because otherwise we know that you're not gonna to wanna to use the service. <laughs> so, you know, when we say we don't care when you send the books back, we really don't care when you send the books back. Um, so that's great. So Cami, you know, that you just gave us indirectly a uh, testimonial on that exact demand. You know, you <laughs> send the books back three years later and we are totally fine with that. Um, but the book does come with the full, the full jacket. Now, do you do anything else with the processing um, when they come in or do you just open the box and put it right on your, right on your shelves? I, I do catalog it so everybody in IHLS can see that we own that copy. Um, so you do interlibrary loan, so you do loan those out? Yeah. Okay. The first, like brand new books, we put um, what we call local only for three months. So my patrons get first dibs basically, but after that three months, then anyone can see that it's available for interlibrary loan. And that's probably how you do all of your new, whole, new releases? Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. Okay. Um, I think at this point, um, haven't seen any questions come in. So what I wanted to show is actually show you, uh, show everyone that's logged on. Um, the individual, um, the actual site. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And this is, um, this is called Bibs. So this is the ordering portal uh, for all of BroadArt. Now, if you're familiar with BroadArt and you're purchasing books from us already, this screen will look very familiar. Uh, this is what anyone who has an, an account uh, on Bibs has access to. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner, you may never noticed it because it doesn't really matter, but yours would say books and AV. And this gives you access to every title we have available. We are a distributor, just like the other major distributors in the industry. We carry from a number of different publishers. We pretty much can carry just about any book you're gonna need. There's even a place to request books if you can't find it on our site. We have all types of free collection development tools that are built into lists that you see here, some specialty uh, collection development tools that are still free, but you have to sign up for, you see those here. It's all relatively straightforward and very easy to manipulate. If you're looking at McNaughton, the service basically, this, it will look the same, but the lists change a little bit. So now if you're in a McNaughton, you would see McNaughton adult book plans. So you can toggle between the two because the biggest difference in our collections, which we really didn't touch on, is that uh, McNaughton is a subset of our overall collection. And we have customers who've been with McNaughton for so long and they think, oh, well, why don't you have this book or why don't you have that book? We probably do have it, but we just don't have it in the McNaughton collection. 
Uh, we do try and bring in all the best sellers. We do the best we can to get all the big names, but we'll throw in some debut novels. We'll throw in, you know, first in a series, you know, books that we think might become popular. You know, we'll throw all of those into here, but it is still a subset. And so what we're trying to do is say, okay, months in advance, and you can see the way some of these lists have been posted. We post them a, a lot of by date. So we will say, okay, uh, this was the February releases uh, came out. You can click on this release and it will show that there are 142 titles on this list. There are way more than 142 titles releasing in the month of February. So basically the way this works, just giving a little bit of you know, the man behind the curtain, we have a collection development team of MLS degree librarians on our staff that they go through this kind of in a, in a, a team manner and take every book that's being published and they go through it. And it's, it basically they started appointing it kind of a point system of whether the book is worthy of going into McNaughton or not. And so it's kind of like, you know, pulling in my history with recorded, I used to be with recorded books. We use the term seats on a plane. You can only have so many books on this list. Sometimes a plane gets a little bit bigger and sometimes it's standing room only, but for the most part, there's a certain number you're trying to reach. And it's usually around 150. It, it depends on the publishing air time of year. Some air times are, it's a little bit smaller. Sometimes it's a little bit higher. But in general, there's a goal that you're going to see about 150 titles. And so we're trying to pick the best of the best. And you can see as this list comes in, most of the authors you're going to see in a list like this, because it's been curated by degreed librarians, they are pulling the names, the authors, the series, uh, or in some cases, the publishers of the brand new series or brand new author, they can go based on the history of that publisher, that these are the books that are probably going to be the most popular. And so you can manipulate these lists in any different way. Again, if you're familiar with us from the purchasing side, it all works the same. You can click on any of these columns and suddenly sort it by title. You can sort by author. You, you can sort by format. And I will just throw one thing out because I find this interesting. Uh, because it's one of the more, most unique aspects of McNaughton is because McNaughton doesn't allow us to uh, circulate paperback books. These titles, as Cami said, can sometimes be in your collection for three years because once again, we will not ask you to send them back. Uh, you know, if you have these for a long time, a paperback book isn't going to last that long. So what we will do, and you can kind of see a little hint of this over here on the left-hand side, knowing that we never do anything in trade paper, well, hardcover, all right, that's fine. That's all the new releases that come out. Everyone understands that. But you then see there's something called McN bound. McN is McNaughton. And so a McNaughton bound book is a trade paper book that has been turned into hardcover and is still being given a dust jacket. So there is a way of doing that on the fly. You know, so if you're purchasing from us and you want to buy, you know, one individual copy of a large print trade paper, you can pay us to convert it, but then you don't, it's, it looks a little different. The McNaughton bound, it will look just like the rest of your books. It will, it will have the same dust jacket. It will have the same type of spine. It'll, it, it looks like a hardcover book. Like that's the way it was released. Um, but we only do it for titles that don't have hardcover. And so you can see right here, the way I sorted it, the James uh, Brabazon has a large, as it happens to be the large type version. And that's where it probably happens the most. Uh, we have a lot of publishers, you know, Thornton, Centerpoint, you know, those, those are going to have, Thorndike, Centerpoint, they're going to have the hardcovers as it is. A lot of publishers do not do their large type in, hard, in hard, hardcover. So if it's coming out only in trade paper, and we feel that it was worthy enough of being chosen to be part of McNaughton, then we will take it this step and we will make it a McNaughton bound book so that when you receive it, it becomes a hardcover or it is a hardcover. I also highlight this because as um, we mentioned a little bit earlier with Cami, there is a part of your collection that you get to keep that is built into the way this, the, the uh, plan is developed. You can keep up to 20% of your books. In many cases, these are the books that people are keeping long-term. 
because they're virtually irre irreplaceable because once they all get destroyed or damaged, they're literally, we wouldn't be able to do another one because we only do this up front when we can do a 500 or a thousand of them at a time. So once they're gone, we really can't do this version again. And if you wanted to buy it, you'd have to buy the trade paper because that's all that exists. So these are super valuable books to have in your collection and they're all included in McNaughton. Uh, one of the things we talked about earlier was the references to price. As you would see the large type, because there's extra services going into this, it does make those books a little bit more expensive. Those become some of those examples where Cami or where a lot of the libraries, maybe their cutoff is 26 or 28 or 30. They might still need to put two um, allowances to get this title. But again, there's really no other way to get one. So it does become kind of that cost benefit analysis that some libraries really like these and like the fact that that's what they're going to be able to have circulate for long for long term. Um, but the way the 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 uh, the way the uh, service works, you get these lists every month and you would simply go in and you would make your acquisitions. So in Cami, she's saying she's doing it three months in advance. Uh, earlier when we were talking with uh, St. Elmo Library, they do it a little bit differently uh, and they order more, they order closer to the release date. Not necessarily anything wrong with that. You know, we're again, we're as flexible as we can be, but it is worth noting um, that Cami is taking advantage of one of the services. We are first in, first out. So the first people that place their orders will be the first people to get their orders. So it doesn't matter if you place your order a day before uh, Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas places their order, you will get your books prior to Las Vegas getting theirs, regardless of the size of your library. So that is one of those perks, particularly for the smaller libraries. First in, first out, we're very egalitarian here. So we, we, we want you to take advantage of that. If you order too close to the release date, you're kind of at the end of the releases, you know, there's, you'll still get your books, but uh, earlier, earlier is better. But there's one little area that we also do because we are not infallible. You'll see when you uh, log on, uh, you would see these little lists that pop up with a long name. And these are the New York Times bestsellers for different weeks. So you can see this one came in on the 29th. It was dropped on the 29th. These were New York Times bestseller titles that for whatever reason we missed. Now, some of these end up being questionable. There's no way we ever missed a Clive Cussler. So this may have been a reprint or it, uh, who knows why this one you know, slid in onto this list as well. Most of these, in some cases, it's because maybe his book was originally scheduled for May and then it was, you know, it was pushed back. And so the dates changed. Uh, so it fell off of lists, who knows? But we are gonna give you the opportunity saying, okay, here are some that we, for whatever reason, had not included in your lists. If you wanna grab them now, you know, take advantage. If it turned out you don't have the Clive Cussler, you don't have the Michael Connolly, you're probably gonna wanna get it. If you don't have the book on Pi, Maybe you want to pass that one. Yeah, who knows? Um, you know, sometimes bestsellers, particularly with the political uh, time frame that we just left, there were a lot of bestseller political books that were only bestsellers for a very short period of time. So we're just giving you the information so you can just choose yourself whether you want to bring those in. I will highlight a couple other areas because they're popping up here, even on this tiny list. These other areas of using the filter, we talked about the, the um, hardcover versus McNaughton. But you also see, it, because you're typically purchasing in advance, if you have a small collection, you're only going to pick, even out of 150 titles, you're maybe only picking 20 or 30, you may need help res restricting which titles you want to pick from. So we've got starred reviews uh, is one you know, popular area. The other one is always compressed, and I never understand why. But down at the bottom, there's this little reference to demand. This is unique to Brodart, not to McNaughton. This is unique to Brodart. Um, this gives a little side point. Brodart does not sell retail. We don't sell online. We don't sell to Amazon. We don't sell to bookstores. We only sell to libraries. So when we receive orders, they're always coming in from a library. So if we then use our algorithm to determine how, how popular these titles are, I'm using a bad list because I'm using one that only has 10, but you will, you have something called hot. That means that a lot of libraries are placing this order or this title. So you can restrict, use that filter to restrict the list down. It went from 10 down to eight because these are already New York Times bestsellers. So again, bad shame on me, I'm using the wrong list, but it serves the same purpose. It's just a really cool filtering tool 
to let you be able to say, you know what, I don't know all of these titles. I don't know, There's, these are coming out three months from now. I don't know what some of these are. I need help, you know, sifting through them. The starred reviews is one of the most popular options or any other area, you know, should you choose. Uh, or that demand is also uh, extremely popular as well. I also wanna highlight because we did comment on this and I don't think we talked about it during the St. Elmo version. Um, this is what Cami is talking about. You can see down here at the bottom, we actually have separate lists for the young adult collection. Um, this is again a case, if you're in an adult McNaughton program, you will have access to young adult. You do not have access to the adult collection if you're only in a young adult plan in which we do offer those. Uh, so you do get the benefit of dropping down. Um, the difference or basically what I'm sure Cami keeps in mind is most YA titles are significantly less expensive. So all of these would fall under the one, um, will probably fall under the one allowance option. Uh, but if you're buying a lot from these, our YA plans are actually a little bit cheaper. So we can actually look at doing a small YA plan plus a small adult plan. Just again, we wanna be flexible and we wanna make sure that this is as uh, cost effective and as beneficial to the library as possible. Um, but at the end of the day, just like you're doing, if you were ordering from anybody, you would end up creating your individual titles, you'd add them to the list, you place that on order, and suddenly you have those titles coming to you from McNaughton. Um, what you get to see, and this again is different if you're familiar with Broadart, there's this extra icon uh, that will pop up once you're in a McNaughton, uh, once you have a McNaughton account, this little, I think it's a credit card, but I actually don't know, uh, this little credit card, when you click on it, it gives you on the fly what your allowances are that are remaining. So you have the ability on the fly to know where you stand. You get all of your allowances up front. So in the case of, of uh, Cami's, uh, of case of Germantown, they have 25 allowances per month. Uh, if you're on an annual plan, you would get all of those up front. Uh, so 25 times 12 is 300. Uh, so you would get all 300 allowances uh, day one. So if you want to buy everything day one, you can, but the, you know, usually you put a mental uh, division that you're going to spend about 25, recognizing there are times of the year that there are much bigger uh, releases, uh, much bigger lists to pick from. So what some libraries will do is pick, you know, use more of those months and then come January when very few things get released, you know, maybe not buy, you know, not use the entire allowance. We don't care how they're used. And if you don't use them at the end of the year, they just carry over. So you don't lose anything, um, but you always have the numbers at your fingertips uh, right here, um, as well as all of the lists. If you have something, as Cami mentioned, that you have somebody looking for a title, you can do a traditional search. You can do a, an advanced search, you know, looking, and this is actually how St. Elmo does it. They do a bunch of searches th right through here. This is searching the McNaughton available inventory. So that's just the biggest thing to remember, particularly if you end up using us for McNaughton only. If you don't uh, switch over to the books account, you won't actually see all of the titles we have available. So you might do a search and it says, nope, not available. Well, most likely Broadart has it. It's just never been made available on the McNaughton side. Um, so uh, particularly for the academic library that's signed in, uh, that may come into play with a lot of academic um, collections. They'll, those very rarely would get incorporated into a um, into a McNaughton list uh, because they are somewhat specialized. So we are trying to pull the broader uh, collections into the list that we have available. And as you can see this one, they get dropped in at the last date they're modified. The January one, there must have been a change. Again, there are still titles being, release dates being changed as a result of COVID. So these lists are very fluid, uh, but we will give you as much up-to-date information as we possibly can. Um, that was pretty much what I wanted to show. I didn't want to get too far into the weeds. We don't need to talk about placing orders or any of that. That we can talk to uh, anybody individually if they were uh, so interested. Um, so Cami, I was just curious, as you uh, look at your uh, page, like how do you use something like this? Do you focus on the release dates or do you do your own searches? How, do, how are you picking uh, which titles to put into your collections? Well, what I would do is once I logged in, I would, I have a note that says look for, you know, three months out. So I look for the January or the February, whatever the most recent. So I go to that list first and I go through and actually on the views, we, you had it on a brief view. I like to put it on expanded. So then if it's like a new release, new author I've never heard of, 
I can kind of read the synopsis and see if that's something my patrons would be interested in. And this is what she's talking about here. So when you get the like original, that <laughs> when you get the original list, and I should have pointed that out. So thank you for highlighting that. Mm -hmm. When you pretty much any time you do a search or get a list, the this little brief uh, radio button is the one that it will default to. Uh, so what Cami is saying, she mentions she can go to expanded, uh, and so you you get um, you still get twenty five to a page, but now you get a lot more information from each. And the other option is this title detail. You will get to that whether you click on the title itself. It just automatically change, takes you to the title detail or you can choose the title detail option from the beginning. And you can see that is one page per title. So this one, because it's the January list and we're already in December, this actually has quite a bit of information already in here. So you've got the starred reviews, you've got um, you know, several reviews uh, so you've got the annotations already put in there. And then we've also added all the BISAC subjects, you know, all the information uh, that we have. The farther out you go, it, you know, as would be understandable, sometimes the less of this information that will become available uh, because you can go farther out. But for the most part, by the time you're getting those lists, most, a lot of this data is there. So yes, that is absolutely beneficial to say, well, let me scroll through the expanded because our goal is to try and find something a little bit beyond the bestsellers, you know, that, you know, obviously you're going to bring in all the Jim Patterson's, like all 20 books he writes in a year, but there's going to be other books that maybe you've not heard of that, you know, are either worthy of becoming popular or could have actually become popular before we, you know, we were the ones that pointed it out, you know, suddenly it, be, it gets picked up by, you know, Reese's book club or something like that, like uh, with where the crawdads sing. That was on our hot list for quite some time before it became hot everywhere else. So hot titles are fun. Uh, and sometimes just reading the descriptions, we want to give you, if it's in our list, this is kind of one of those things for people that have been with us for a really long time. It's proofs in the pudding. We'll tell you that what's in the list is all going to be gold. You may not want that gold. Like there are going to be certain things that we're doing this nationwide. And so there might be some urban literature that maybe, you know, not what some people would want. But for the most part, we make it a goal that every book in there, if you had the allowances available and the unending budget, you'd want all 131 because these are kind of the best of the best. Um, so we do try and give you the best collection. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, so that's the brief versus expanded. And what I like on the, um, the young adult version of that same list or that same view is it'll give you kind of a grade level if it's like nine through 12 or um, fifth through eighth grade or something. I like that because then I know, I know my kids that are coming in, it would be appropriate or, I mean, they can check out whatever they want. <laughs> I don't decide what's appropriate, but you know, I know kind of what their... Um, their area of interest is, and I can pull those at their reading level. Excellent. I'm glad you pointed that out because I hadn't really thought about that. I don't. I don't work with as many uh, libraries on the YA side, so I hadn't even thought about that. That changing to the expanded view suddenly does give you that at a glance. You know, just with a little bit extra scrolling, you've got the age as well as the grade. Uh, so that's great. Because I don't get a lot of high school kids in, it doesn't mean I won't order a book for them, but I can then tell like, oh, this level is definitely kids are going to want to read this one, rather than if it's for 9 through 12, I might, oh, I'll get a couple of those. Sorry, I was trying to, I've got somebody working outside my window. So the benefits of working from home, uh, <laughs> suddenly a construction going on. Uh, probably, probably I was trying to mute and I couldn't get myself unmuted. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, thank you for pointing pointing that out. Uh, now from using bibs, I mean, this is kind of a loaded question. We had not, I had not asked your um, opinion on this. In general, do you find it relatively self self-explanatory, relatively easy to use? Uh, yeah, and I, the librarian before me actually sat down and trained me on it, so that made it a lot easier. Um, I, I think I probably could have figured it out if I played with it long enough, but I've done it a few months now that I know exactly where I want to go, uh, what what view I want to use, um, and that kind of thing, so yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, I'm watching uh, the, the questions. I uh, haven't seen any uh, questions coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and stop showing the screen so I've got to see everybody. Um, and again, now they're even closer to my window. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. So uh, 
wanted to go ahead and thank everyone for joining. Uh, if anyone did have any quick questions, you can throw in before we sign off. But uh, definitely another shout out to Cami for joining us uh, on this uh, panel discussion. Another thank you to Cassandra from Heartland Library Association for helping me set this up. Uh, so again, thanks to all of you who joined. I appreciate your time. And uh, if you want to reach out to me, you should have my email from the confirmation email that came out to you. You should have my email address as part of that. Feel free to reach out to me uh, if you have any specific questions about your individual library or individual applications. I didn't ask Cammy's permission, but I'm sure if you hunted her down, she'd be more than happy to answer questions as well. Um, so uh, feel free uh, to talk to her. Um, uh, in addition, if you had any other uh, clarifications, and again, keep in mind that our programs are customizable. So in the case of Cami's, uh, in case of Germantown, they're using a plan, as she said, is about $400 per month. Uh, that gives her 25 allowances. Don't let, don't let that dictate anything. Um, we've got plans that are slightly smaller than that. We've got plans that are significantly larger with different cutoffs. And there's, again, it's all customizable. Let us know what you're looking for, and we will do the best we can uh, to fit your needs. And in some cases, it may not fit your needs. You know, that's something that we're very upfront about. McNaughton is a great program for a lot of libraries, but not for everybody. So it's one of those cases. Let us know what you're looking for. Hopefully this gave you a taste of what we have to offer, uh, but I'd love the opportunity to speak with you further uh, and uh, discuss any additional options that might work with your library. So again, thanks a lot for, to Cami uh, for your time. Thank you for everyone for signing in and joining the webinar today. And I wish you the best for the rest of the day and a great weekend. Thanks everybody. Have a great night. Bye.